and I won that award, you know, against thousands of other interior designers. So, sort of, I remember from that moment on, I thought I didn't have to prove anything, which is good because then you're just doing it naturally. So it was important then. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I suppose thinking of um, particular projects that have been important. I mean, again, are there any that you particularly remember as where you learned a lot yourself? I think you learn from every project and, and you know people always say which is your favourite and it's always, it's always the last one I did because it's sort of in my mind and, and I design every project myself still but I suppose something like British Airways First Class was you know stands out in my head because it was so extraordinary to be at BA and going into these hangars and into the planes when they're not you know actually up in the air and they're quite dark and scary and there I was doing this presentation where the whole thing was all cream and taupe, you know, because I was so, like, in cuckoo land as to what could be done in a commercial airline. And, you know, I got a standing ovation with my presentation, and then I remember, I think it was Bob Ayling was the, the head then, and he said, you know, uh, I've just been told that your presentation was in taupe and, and cream, even though he was in the presentation, he said, but I'm actually colour blind. I thought, oh, great. <laughs> and uh, he said, but it's totally impractical. We need to have branded colours. So I had to change it all to sort of, you know, boring blue and red. But I remember going into the, the hangar and going into the first class, you know, loo. And I saw that in, on the inside was a window, but it had been blocked up. And I said, well, surely this should be taken off. It would be fantastic to have a pee and, and have the window open. So they, I actually put the windows back into the loos on planes, which I feel quite proud about. So it had this thing that when it was on the ground, it sort of went opaque. And when you were up in the air, you could see all the clouds and stuff. But it was, um, it was, that was a pretty amazing project. Mm. No, absolutely. I and mean, it's interesting, you mentioned there yourself that, of course, you are known as Queen of Tape. And, um, you know, you pioneered, really, that, that whole sort of switch to neutrals. When did that happen for you? Why, why was, the, was the neutral thing always important from the word go, even back at 16? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't sort of remember waking up and thinking Tope was it. But, I mean, it was just, I love that colour. I still do. When I see it, I sort of go, oh, you know. Um, and it's sort of become a bit of a joke with the press now. And I do use colour. Every journalist will always say that you never use colour. And I always get quite cross and get my books out and go, look, there's colour, you know. But generally, or I absolutely maintain that neutrals are a better base in the home. They're certainly better in your bedroom to wake up and fall asleep in. And I also think that, you know, colour should be put in sort of with accessories and things because, you know, people are conscious of money and spending money. And if you sort of do walls in red and yellow and, and things like that, you know, you will want to change it. It's like your wardrobe. You're constantly not going to wear the same clothes over and over again. So, you know, I think it was when I first started at 16 and a half, I was trying to sort of think of revolutionary ways to use fabrics and I remember going to Wolfin who was a, uh, a fabric designer on Great Portland Street which I actually heard the other day had shut down I was quite upset and it was all it was all basically linings like calico and mattress tickings and hessians and things that you would use under fabrics you know to upholster but I, I chose to use those as fabrics as a main fabric for a home and then mix it in with sort of fortunies and expensive fabrics that would shock the other fabric. So all of those fabrics were all neutral. So I think that's where it kind of began. But it was just it was where my eye was drawn to. Mm -hmm. Did you have your I mean are there any houses you remember from childhood which were influential to you do you think? Absolutely. I mean my last book I sort of dedicated really in the forward to my grandmother who had this extraordinary house in Cape Town and we used to go back every year, you know, for Christmas. And I just, you know, when I was doing these books, which I'd done with Helen, I remember sort of thinking, what were the things that kind of inspired me as a child? But my mother was, you know, and is an, an amazing woman of style, and our homes were always beautiful. But my grandmother's home just had that essence of home, real home. And I think that, you know, and I'm to blame as well because of my work being in magazines, and it's very stylized when it gets photographed. But the thing that my clients say is that they feel like they've lived there all their lives but they've only just moved in. It's that feeling that you create a home which is kind of, in the old days, your home was something that you built over generations and you bought things to use. And my grandmother had extraordinary china and, and glass that 
was today would look so expensive and unique and yet she used it every day and it was kind of the smell of the home you know when you put your key in the door and you suddenly feel safe and it was all that kind of thing so I think it had a big part to play and also she entertained a lot at home with family and friends and so I think that had an enormous impact on me growing mm. up. Mm. I was